Hello dear students, I am Dr. Mushfi Gorozu from the Department of the Pathological Anatomy of Azerbaijan Medical University. The topic of uh, our today's lecture is Pathological Anatomy of Gastrointestinal Tract Diseases. Uh, the following diseases about the pathology of the following diseases will be discussed. First, uh, of all, we'll uh, remember with you the anatomy and the physiology of the uh, GI tract. Uh, then we'll uh, continue uh, about the tonsillitis, then the disease of the esophagus, then uh, gastric diseases. Uh, and finally, we have the discussion about the uh, in intestinal diseases. Uh, I hope you remember from the anatomy course uh, the structure or morphology of the digestive uh, system that is composed of two separate categories of organs, first the digestive organs and the accessory digestive organs. The digestive organs collectively make up the uh, gastrointestinal tract, uh, shortly we call as the GI tract. It also called the digestive uh, uh, tract or the alimentary uh, canal. The GI tract organs are the oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small and large intestines. These organs form a continuous tube from the mouth to the anus. Uh, but there are the accessory digestive organs. That they are the, not part of the long GI tube, but often developed as outgrowths from and are uh, connected to the GI tract. These organs assist the GI tract in the digestion of materials. The accessory digestive organs include the teeth, tongue, salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. This slide illustrates the anatomical structure of the GI tract organs and accessory organs. Here you see the oral cavity, the esophagus, uh, then the stomach, small and large intestines, with the liver, pancreas uh, and salivary glands. Here also the uh, very nice illustration. Let me short, uh, discuss about the functions of the digestive system because this very important to know uh, for the understanding the pathology of this uh, system diseases. Uh, there are some factions. First of them is ingestions. It is the introduction of solid and liquid materials into the oral cavity and the first step in the process of digesting and the absorbing nutrients. The digestion is the breakdown of large food items into smaller structures and molecules. There are two aspects to uh, digestions. First, the mechanical digestion that physically breaks down ingested material into smaller pieces and chemical digestion breaks down ingested material into smaller molecules by using enzymes. The first part of mechanical digestion is mastication, the chewing of ingested material by the teeth in the oral cavity. After the materials are swallowed, they move through the GI tract by a process termed propulsion. Uh, there are two types of the movement uh, in propulsion, the peristalsis and segmentation. The peristalsis, the process of muscular contraction that forms the ripples along part of the GI tract and forces the material to move further along the tract. The churning and mixing movements into in the small intestine called segmentation that help disperse the material being digested and combine it with digestive organ secretion. Secretion is the process of producing and releasing mucin or flues such as acid, bile and digestive enzymes. When these products are secreted into the lumen of the GI tract, they facilitate the chemical digestion and the passage of material through the GI tract. Some of these products for example, the acid, bile, digestive enzymes help digest food. Mucin secretion serves a protective f 
function. We can uh, show the example in the uh, stomach, in the large intestines, that uh, machine fixed with water to form mucus, and the mucus caught the GI wall to protect and lubricate it against acidic secretions and ab abrasions by passing material, as I said, uh, in the stomach, for example. Absorption involves either passive movement or active transport of electrolytes, digestion products, vitamins, and water across the GI tract, epithelium, and into GI tract blood and lymph vessel, vessels. The final function of the digestive system is the elimination of waste. So our bodies utilize the most, but not all, of the components of what we eat. All ingestible materials, as well as the waste products secreted by the accessory organs into the GI tract, are compacted into feces or the fecal material and then eliminated from the GI tract by the process of defecation. Uh, first, uh, we'll uh, start about the disease of the tonsils because the, for the location they belong to the uh, digestive tract organs, for the location, for the topography, for the fraction, you know, they, they belong to the immune uh, system. Uh, the elements of the uh, lymphoid uh, tissue accumulated uh, in the initiation part of the digestive and the respiratory uh, tract, uh, as well as the uh, palatine tonsils. Here you see the link one tonsil, the tubal tonsil, and the uh, tonsils and the pharyngeal tonsils. The commonly they called as the Valdeir's lymphoid ring, all the Valdeir's uh, Pirakov's lymphoid. Uh, rings uh, because uh, after the birth the newborn uh, they uh, have no completely development of the immune system so the by uh, location here the elements of the lymphoid tissue helps to protect uh, our body from the uh, external uh, agents and uh, here you see the uh, uh, gross uh, structure, anatomical structure of the palatine uh, tonsils uh, and here we see uh, we do the microscopic structure that they consist of the germinal center, the nodular part uh, that covered by the stratified squamous epithelium uh, and here you see the uh, section of the cribs. Uh, the infection disease of the tonsils we call the tonsillitis or the inflammation of the tonsils we call the tonsillitis. Uh, this is the infection disease accompanied by hyperplasia and other inflammatory change. Uh, they can affect the palatine tonsils or the pharyngeal tonsils or the lingual uh, tonsils. Uh, Early it was called the angina, that means that uh, suffocation. Um, it is very common in preschool and school age children, as we uh, mentioned, that uh, these um, uh, people, uh, these children, the immune system system not completely uh, develops. Uh, so the, uh, these tonsils, they are reactively uh, uh, functions uh, as the protective organs. There are two kinds of the tonsillitis, the acute and uh, chronic. Uh, during the acute uh, tonsillitis, uh, the uh, tonsils are composed of lymphatic tissue, you know, uh, as we said that, uh, and are the component of the Valdeir uh, rings along with the adenoids, tubal tonsils and lingual tonsils. This is the, uh, that we discussed uh, now, and uh, tonsillitis, uh, is a common disease and makes up the approximately 1.3% of outpatient visits. It is predominantly the result of viral or bacterial infection uh, and they uncomplicated present as a sore throat. Acute tonsillitis is a clinical diagnosis. The differentiation between bacterial and viral causes can be difficult. However, it is crucial to prevent the overuse of antibiotics. Uh, etiology uh, they develop uh, by the uh, by the uh, action of the staphylococci, pneumococci, adenovirus, and various microbial associations. 
pathogenetic factors they divided into two parts exogenic and endogenic uh, the endogenic uh, factors uh, are the common cold the consumption of the cold water and substances traumas of the mucous membranes of tonsils but the endogenic uh, it may be the weakened immune system age features of the lymphoid ring auto infection such as the carriers chronic pulpitis chronic laryngitis chronic pharyngitis, retropharyngeal infection, and etc. Which complications we can uh, miss during the acute tonsillitis? Uh, they, they divide it into the local and the general. Uh, local complications, uh, maybe the peritonsillar abscess, the retropharyngeal abscess, pharyngeal phlegmon, thrombophilobitis, acute otitis media, and the general, the tonsillogenic sepsis, post-reptococcal glomerulonephritis and rheumatic fever and etc. Et uh, there are some clinical morphological types of the acute tonsillitis uh, dependent on the characteristics of the pathogenetic process. Uh, from the uh, general pathology you remember the catarrhal tonsillitis, uh, the serous, serous mucosa exudate appears on the uh, tonsillar mucosa and the, the Catarrhal tonsillitis is a part of the generalized pharyngitis that is seen in viral infections. Uh, another kinds of the fibrinose or the membranous tonsillitis that characterized by the formation of the whitish, yellowish, diphtheritic fibrinose membrane on the surface of the mucosa. Then purulent or the suppurative tonsillitis. There are two types of the purulent tonsillitis uh, from the general pathology. Uh, again, you probably remember about the uh, kind of this uh, inflammation that they reach with the neutrophils. Uh, if they uh, diffusely in the tonsilla, we call the phlegmonous tonsillitis. Or they, uh, if they located as the small abscesses, uh, apostemas, we call the apostematous tonsillitis. There are two types of the uh, tonsillitis, uh, acute tonsillitis that they uh, classified for the localization. One of them is lacunar tonsillitis. Uh, the serous, mucous, or purulent exudate accumulated in the tonsilla lacuna. And here forms the false membranes, not true membranes. Uh, and follicular tonsillitis that the uh, pathologic process they uh, Cover they uh, located in the tonsilla cribs. So uh, another types of, of the tonsillitis, acute tonsillitis, is the necrotic tonsillitis, and here forms the wounds when the necrotic mass ruptures. We call the uh, necrotic uh, ulcerated tonsillitis, uh, gangrenous tonsillitis. This is the special uh, types of the acute tonsillitis that uh, usually found in the children with acute leukemia or the scarlet fever. So at this time the tonsils grow in size and appear greenish black. Uh, one of the also the special types of the tonsil acute tonsillitis is Vincennes tonsillitis or the Vincennes angina or the ulcerative membranosal tonsillitis or the Simonovsky low Vincennes tonsillitis that is usually epidemic that they uh, caused by the combined action of the spirochetes and the fusobacteria, uh, fusobacterium fusiforme. Uh, this uh, here uh, you can see the acute catarrhal or the superficial tonsillitis, then acute membranous tonsillitis or the acute fibrinose tonsillitis, and here we see we do the acute follicular tonsillitis. Uh, in the histology. Uh, of the acute tonsillitis, as uh, we said, we can found here the uh, epaptotic bodies, then foamy histiocytes, the abundant foamy histiocytes, and the phagocytic histiocyte. Uh, we can found in the acute tonsillitis. Chronic tonsillitis may be a complication of the acute tonsillitis, the subclinical infection of tonsils without acute attack. The allergic factors play an important role in the pathogenesis of the chronic tonsillitis. Chronic infection of the paranasal uh, sinuses or the teeth 
may be a predisposing factor, often accompanied by recurrence. The palatine tonsils are deformed by diffuse sclerosis, often shrinking in size. There are numerous sclerotic adhesions with saronic soft tissue. Chronic tonsillitis is sometimes accompanied by purulent pharyngitis or the pharyngolaryngitis. Chronic tonsillitis acts as a source of endogenous infection as well as the rheumatic fever. There are three types of the chronic tonsillitis, chronic follicular tonsillitis, chronic parenchymatous tonsillitis, and chronic uh, fibrotonsillitis. The clinical features uh, are the recurrent attacks or of acute tonsillitis, chronic irritation in uh, throat and cough, and bad taste in mouth and fall breed, uh, we call this halitosis. Uh, this slide illustrates the uh, normal and the uh, pathology of the tons, uh, tonsils during the chronic uh, tonsillitis. In the normal uh, surface epithelium, we see we do the stratified squamous non-keratinized surface epithelium and no annual lymphocytes. But here, uh, in the surface epithelium, we see the scattered small lymphocyte groups uh, in moderate lymphocytes infiltration in the surface epithelium and the lymphocytes in the sub-epithelial region. The esophagus, this is the uh, tubular part of the, the, the uh, GI tract, approximately uh, 25 uh, centimeters long. And as you know that the esophagus, they conduct the oral uh, cavity with the stomach, and it has uh, uh, layers, uh, consists of the layers uh, such as the mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer, and the adventitial layer, that is uh, general structure of the wall of the tubular organs uh, as well. Uh, and uh, you know that the mucosa uh, here in the esophagus is uh, covered by the stratified non-keratinized epithelium, here you see, uh, and the mucosa also have the lamina propria and the uh, muscularis mucosa. Then we see here the submucosa and the uh, muscular layer that consists of the internal circular and uh, outer, uh, inner circular and outer longitudinal uh, layers. And uh, you know that the muscle tissue consists of the skeletal muscles in the upper one third of the uh, esophagus in the middle one third is uh, mixed with the uh, uh, skeletal and the uh, smooth muscle and the lower one third is uh, uh, certainly consists of the smooth uh, musculature. Uh, the disease of the esophagus uh, mainly the, uh, are the uh, hernias of the esophagus uh, and the infection uh, disease is uh, reflux esophagitis uh, and uh, Barrett's esophagus as well. And here you see the uh, grouping of the esophageal diseases. Uh, the first the reflux esophagitis, the Barrett's esophag esophagus and the strictures. These are most common uh, diseases of the esophagus and the less common uh, diseases are the lower airway syndrome it is the bleeding to the rupture of the uh, mucosa of the transition zone between the esophagus and the stomach with severe vomiting. Then uh, the viruses, uh, as I said, the hernia, the zenker diverticulum, tracheoesophageal fistula, and the plumber winson uh, syndrome, that is the rare uh, diseases that are characterized by the difficulty swallowing, iron deficiency, anemia, colocytis, chalosis, and esophageal uh, verbs. Uh, from this uh, illustration, you see the, uh, some uh, diseases that they uh, show here, the achalasia, uh, cardia, uh, then hiatal hernia, we see here, then hiatal 
paraesophageal hernia, rolling, uh, zenger diverticulum, the epinevric, uh, sorry, epiphrenic diverticulum, anti-mellory waste tear syndrome. The esophagitis uh, characterized by damage and inflammation of the epithelial lining of the esophagus. Uh, there are three major etiological groups of the esophagitis. First, the infection esophagitis, chemical esophagitis, uh, this is the most common form, and the esophagitis as a manifestation of other disease. Uh, the main cause of gastroesophageal uh, reflux, the reflux of the contents of the stomach, sometimes uh, the duodenum, into the lower esophagus. Another uh, cause may be infection factors. But the histological features are not internally sensitive and specific for esophagitis. And clinical and endoscopic information can be very useful in the diagnosis of the esophagitis. Clinical signs uh, include uh, dysphagia, nausea, vomiting, chest pain, stenosis, and eating disorders. Uh, here is the another uh, classification of the esophagitis, the clinical morphological types of the esophagitis, the uh, reflux esophagitis, eosinophilic esophagitis, lymphocytic esophagitis, necrotic esophagitis, or another that we call, we call it the sloughing uh, esophagitis, then Crohn's disease affecting the esophagitis, peel esophagitis, uh, during the using of the, some uh, drugs, medicines, uh, for example, antibiotics, especially of the tetracycline family, uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, and etc. Then infectious esophagitis and skin disorders affecting the esophagus. Uh, now, uh, let we uh, investigate the reflux esophagitis. Here you see the endoscopic appearance of the ulcerative uh, esophagitis that's secondary to the severe gastroesophageal reflux uh, diseases. Histologically, the gastroesophageal reflux disease is characterized by increasing the basal layer thickening, elongated papilla, here we see with you, and the mild inflammation with occasional eosinophils. And the uh, first uh, step during the uh, esophageal biopsy uh, we do the uh, founding uh, searching uh, for the eosinophils. This is the clue marker for the uh, diagnosis of the esophagitis. Uh, eosinophilic esophagitis uh, with characteristic rings known as the tracheization visible uh, in the endoscopy. And here in the histologic slice, we see the, uh, also the basal cell hyperplasia elongated papilla uh, and also we can uh, see the increasing uh, number the abundant number of the intraepithelial eosinophils that more than 15 in the one high power film another kind of the esophagitis is the infectious esophagitis uh, here you see the esophagitis is uh, affected by the candida the fungi here you see the uh, hepha of the candida. Uh, then herpes esophagitis. Here we see with you the multinucleated ground uh, glass inclusion inside of the uh, cells with the chromatin margination and molding. Then the uh, during the cytomegalovirus infections, we see we do the inclusions within the stromal cells and immunohistochemistry for cytomegalovirus. That here. Uh, the arrows uh, highlights the multiple uh, inclusions. Another disease of the esophagus is the Barrett's esophagus. Uh, the American College of Gastroenterology uh, definition of the Barrett uh, esophagus is that extension of salmon colored mucosa into the tubular esophagus extended more equal one centimeter proximal to the gastroesophageal junction with biopsy conformation of intestinal metaplasia, goblet cells. Uh, etiology of the esophagitis uh, are the chronic more than five years gastroesophageal uh, reflux disease symptoms 
the advancing age more than uh, 50 years and the male gender tobacco using central obesity and Caucasian race so most common in first degree relatives of subjective with non part as a focus uh, where uh, located the part is a focus uh, especially in the distal esophagus and the gastroesophageal junction. Uh, pathophysiology of the Barrett esophagus. The metaplasia in the Barrett esophagus presumably results from cellular reprogramming. The gastroesophageal reflux disease induces tissue damage, reprograms immature progenitor cells to express columnar development transcription factors. The tissue injury activates signaling pathways such as the head jog, the bone uh, morphogenetic protein for uh, nuclear factor kappa and the down regulation notch signaling. The signals lead to increased expression of the SOX9 that induce columnar differentiation, FOX8-2, CDX1 and CDX2 that induce the intestinal differentiation. Trans differentiation the distinctive type of the multilayer epithelium at the squamous columnar junction with features of both squamous and columnar epithelium may occur in Barrett esophagus. Uh, the clinical uh, features same with the gastroesophageal reflux syndrome. Uh, grossly, as we said in the definition, the red or the salmon colored mucosa between pale squamous mucosa of lower esophagus and lush pink gastric mucosa may have tongues extending up from gastroesophageal junction. The endoscopics utilize the PRAC classification to describe disease extent in part uh, mucosa. Here we, see, uh, we do the uh, endoscopy of the Barth's esophagus in the gastroesophageal uh, junction. Uh, and here uh, we see the intestinal metaplasia, the columnar epithelium with the uh, Gobble cells. Let me discuss uh, about some uh, microscopy uh, description of the Barrett uh, esophagus. Uh, here we see the abundant number of the Gobble cells that are uh, character uh, characteristic for the intestinal metaplasia. There are this, here we see the true Gobble cells that are randomly scattered, uh, barrel shaped. Here we see or the circular shape uh, with a bluish cytoplasmic hue. And also uh, we can find the pseudogoblet cells, that they are the uh, goblet-shaped gastric foveola cells that are the, they clustered and characteristically arranged in the liner or the back-to-back. -back. Uh, here we see the reactive uh, Barrett mucosa that uh, shows the four line. The first line here we see the gastric foveola type mucin droplets. Then uh, second line the base of the uh, foveola mucin vacuole. Third line here we see the cytoplasm uh, below the mucin vacuole and the nuclear. Uh, row, row of the nuclei uh, here in the epithelium. Uh, so this is the four lines in the Barrett mucosa. Uh, then in the Barrett mucosa uh, also uh, we can find the hybrid glands that consist of the mixed the metaplastic with the gobble cells and the mucinose epithelium uh, and the high specificity uh, specificity for the Barrett mucosa. Another histologic uh, features is the basal glands in the Barrett uh, mucosa. That here we can uh, show the nuclear stratification and elongation. Uh, another uh, another histologic uh, sign is the squamous epithelium that overlying the glands with the intestinal metaplasia. You see here the squamous epithelium and the underlying the uh, columnar epithelium, the intestinal epithelium with the gobble cells. Uh, also the duplication of the muscularis mucosa, this is the characteristic features 
uh, in the barred esophagus. Uh, here we see the star highlights the inner uh, muscularis mucosa, and the arrow highlights the native or the outer muscularis mucosa. Uh, now we'll uh, discuss about the diseases of the stomach. Uh, from anatomy, you remember the structure of the stomach. This is uh, the enlarged portion of the uh, dilated portion of the GI tube, approximately with the 3 liter uh, uh, volume, and it has the uh, cardiac region, the entrance region, the body with the fundus, and the pyloric region that they separated to the entrum and the canal, the pyloric canal uh, region. Uh, with the lesser curvature, you, you know, uh, the greater curvature here. And the histology of the stomach, as we said, uh, in the uh, esophagus, they uh, consist of the mucosa with the covering foveolar epithelium, the lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosa with the submucosal layer uh, and the muscularis externa uh, that outside the stomach surrounded with the uh, peritoneum, that it is the intraperitoneal uh, organ. And the histologic uh, structure, uh, here we see the high power of the uh, mucosa uh, with the epithelial foveolar uh, or the glandular cells, the lamina that locate in the lamina propria. Uh, we call it the uh, gastric glands. Uh, they dispersed in the fundic uh, region, the pyloric region, the cardiac region. Most commonly they uh, located in the uh, fun, uh, fun, fundal uh, region uh, and the gastric uh, glands they uh, have uh, some different cell types uh, as well the uh, zymogenic chief cells that they produce the pepsinogen then uh, parietal or the oxygen cells that they produce the hydrochloric acid then uh, mucous cells that they are the two types of the mucous cells that located in the neck region uh, and also in the surface lining cells here we see we do the stem cells or the regenerative uh, cells uh, with also the intraendocrine cells the cells of the acute system for example the uh, major hormone that they produce uh, in the uh, stomach is the castrin. Uh, here we see the funduc mucosa with the parietal anti chief cells and the entral mucosa with mucin secreting uh, glands. And after the uh, anatomical, uh, histological, and physiological uh, features, that physiology include that you know that the, the gastric juice that produced by the gastric glands, they uh, mixed with the food uh, elements and here forms the chymus that uh, uh, mainly the proteins they undergo the digestion in the stomach that they serve to the uh, simple peptides. The risk, risk uh, uh, the gastritis is the inflammatory process, inflammation of the uh, stomach. Uh, the risk factors for the gastritis are the drugs that direct irritating the effect of the gastric mucosa uh, such as the aspirin, the non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and corticosteroids diet uh, as well the alcohol uh, using the spicy food uh, microorganisms, the helicobacter pylori that important cause of the chronic gastritis that promotes the breakdown of the gastric mucosal barrier also, the staphylococci uh, maybe uh, play uh, as the risk factor role. Environmental factors, the radiation, smoking, pathophysiologic conditions such as the burns, renal failure, sepsis, and other factors. Uh, for example, the physiological stress, uh, nasogastral tube. The uh, there are two types of the gastritis, the acute gastritis and the chronic gastritis. The acute gastritis is the acute inflammation of the gastric mucosa, depending on the region 
of the occurrence there are diffuse uh, and focal acute gastritis. Uh, the etiology includes the, uh, both the exogenic and endogenic factors. The exogenic factors are the elementary, toxic, medicamentous, infections, and erosion. Uh, the endogenic include the endemic, intoxication, ischemic factors, the circulatory, uh, neurotic, and the sepsis. Uh, there are uh, four classic types of the acute gastritis you remember from the general pathology. Mm, uh, also, we discussed in the tonsillitis, uh, for example, cultural uh, gastritis. Here we see the dystrophy, necrobiosis, necrosis, and erosions uh, that they uh, only localize in the mucosal uh, epithelium. Then fibrinose uh, gastritis, if the necrotic layer is thin, here will uh, develop the crupose uh, fibrinose gastritis, if deep diphtheritic gastritis. The phlegmonose gastritis, the prolet exudate is formed in the mucosa and submucosa, and necrotic acute gastritis, uh, mainly they uh, develops after the action of the erosive um, uh, substances such as the acids, alkalis, we call this the corrosive gastritis. Uh, here we see the uh, grossly structure of the acute gastritis and the histology of the acute gastritis that in the lamina propria uh, we see uh, the uh, nature of this polymorphic nuclear lymphocytes here we see. Uh, the, uh, chronic gastritis is defined as the presence of chronic mucosal inflammatory change, leading eventually to mucosal atrophy and intestinal metaplasia, usually in the absence of erosions. Uh, etiology, uh, there are two etiological factors for the chronic infection by Helicobacter pylori and the immunologic uh, factors in association with pernicious anemia. Uh, we will use the some uh, different classification for the uh, chronic gastritis. One of them is a pathogenetic classification or the, uh, according to the pathogenetic mechanisms. There are three types of the gastritis. A gastritis, B gastritis and C gastritis. The A gastritis, another name is autoimmune gastritis. That is, is the autoimmune disease forms the autoantibodies against the parietal cells of the gastric glands that they produce the uh, hydrochloric acids uh, also known as the fundal or the hypoacid gastritis because the uh, parietal cells they damaged by the uh, antibodies autoantibodies and they can produce the hydrochloric acid and their stomach became to the hypoacid environment uh, and the B12 uh, deficiency uh, anemia is developed here that we call the pernicious anemia for the deficiency of the internal factor of the castle. Uh, B gastritis, this is the helicobacter pylori gastritis that 80% uh, of all chronic gastritis uh, mainly localized in the entrum of the stomach that caused by the helicobacter pylori. C gastritis this is the duodenal gastral reflux uh, that occurs in the patients after gastric resection. In 30% of such patients, it develops the enteral chronic gastritis. Uh, here uh, you, see, you see another uh, classifications of the chronic gastritis. Uh, first, uh, according to the localization, uh, the fundal pangastritis, enteral gastritis, according to the activity. Uh, active gastritis or the chronic active gastritis, chronic non-active gastritis. According to the clinical course, there are mild, moderate, and severe gastritis. According to the morphologic features, there are the superficial, atrophic, and hypertrophic uh, gastritis. We mainly uh, will focus uh, to the uh, morphogenetic, uh, morphological features uh, or the pathogenetic features of the gastritis uh, with the activization. The chronic superficial gastritis uh, this is mainly uh, caused by the helicobacter pylori 
and the, here mucosa is normal thickens. The main morphological change occurred in the upper uh, one third of the surface layer. We can find here the degenerative change in the epithelium, but sometimes the metaplasia. But do not confuse this metaplasia uh, with the intestinal metaplasia. Uh, the students uh, mainly they confuse in the exam uh, questions. Uh, this metaplasia sometimes uh, we can note here, and the lympholeukocytic infiltration and edema uh, occurs in the lamina uh, propria. The chronic superficial gastritis can remain in the same condition for many years without any uh, progression. Here you see the lymphoid follicle formation in the lamina propria of the uh, stomach. This is the clue histologic features of the helicobacter pyrrhic gastritis. Here uh, under the high power we see we do the uh, helicobacter pyrrhic microorganisms uh, with the special gym gimza uh, stainings and here you see the immunohistochemistry for the helicobacter pyrrhic. Uh, here I add for you the electron micrograph of the helicobacter pyrrhic uh, with the 3D uh, structure and the also the immunohistochemistry of the Helicobacter pyrrhic microorganisms. Uh, another uh, types of the gastritis is chronic atrophic gastritis. Uh, here we can uh, find the atrophy and the uh, sclerosis uh, in the lamina propria uh, and the uh, major uh, features of the chronic atrophic gastritis uh, instead with the uh, together with the atrophy of the uh, glands the finding of the metaplasia uh, especially the intestinal metaplasia with the gallbladder cells here we see the uh, present of the abundant gallbladder cells in the stomach normally you know the, the cells absent in the uh, covering the epithelium of the and the glandular epithelium of the mucosa, uh, and uh, you see here the mucose lining. As you know that the uh, covering epithelial cells of the stomach also they can produce the mucose that they uh, prevent the uh, cellular structure, prevent the wall of the stomach from the acid environment of the lumen. Uh, sometimes we use the Sydney system of grading the chronic uh, gastritis. Uh, we can note the uh, site of the uh, diseases, uh, enteral or the corporal mucosa, and the grading uh, of the uh, inflammation, mild, moderate, marked for the uh, checking of the helicobacter pylori presenting, chronic inflammation, activity atrophy and intestinal metaplasia. How we can uh, show the activity? Uh, if we found here the neutrophils, we, we diagnose this as the uh, chronic active gastritis because there are no any neutrophils uh, in the lamina propria in the norm. Uh, but uh, normally uh, the some lymphocytes and the plasma cells we can find in the lamina propria up to the uh, five in the high uh, power field. But not all, all, all of the labs they use the Sydney system. It depended on the hospitals and the pathologists. Third types of the uh, as called the gastritis is the chronic hypertrophic gastropathy. This is not true gastritis. In a great name, this is the hypertrophic gastritis. Uh, there are three uh, diseases that uh, we can find this uh, hypertrophic gastropathy, one of them is menetra disease that resulting from uh, profound hyperplasia of the surface mucosas with accompanying glandular atrophy. Uh, second, then, hypertrophic hypersecretory gastropathy that associated with hyperplasia of the parietal and the chief cells with gastric glands and the gastric gland hyperplasia secondary to excessive gastrin secretions, for example, in the gastrinoma, in the Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. This slide illustrates the uh, gross pathology of the uh, menetary disease or the chronic giant hypertrophic gastropathy, also here we see with you, and the histologic features 
of the uh, chronic giant hypertrophic gastropathy. Do you, uh, you see here the uh, hypertrophy of the uh, gastric foveolus. Uh, instead, uh, we will discuss about the ulcer disease, the peptic ulcer disease yeah, of the stomach, but there are also uh, the symptomatic ulcers that uh, develops as a signs of other diseases. First, let we discuss about the symptomatic ulcers, then uh, we will continue with the uh, peptic ulcer diseases. Uh, the endocrine ulcers, uh, they, uh, they develop during the, uh, some endocrine diseases such as the Ellison-Zollinger syndrome, uh, thyrotoxic boiter, the parathyroidosis, then uh, the ulcers uh, resulting by the hemocyte secretory uh, disturbances, disorders. For example, they will call it uh, congestion ulcers during the cardiovascular insufficiencies and uh, different vasculitis uh, or the cardiovascular failures. The uh, medicamentous ulcers uh, during the treatment with the steroids and the aspirins, toxic uh, ulcers, chronic infections ulcers, for example, some specific inflammation, the tuberculosis, syphilis, lephrosis, and etc. Uh, one interesting type of the ulcers is the stress ulcers. For example, uh, during the shocks, the burn disease, uh, sepsis, uh, after the severe operations, uh, in the central nervous system lesions, we call this cushing ulcers, or the burn disease, we call the, the ulcers during the burn disease, we, we call it curling ulcers, uh, etc. And allergic ulcers, and etc. also, the they are the, uh, are the symptomatic ulcers. The peptic or the chronic ulcer uh, disease uh, is the relapsing, usually solitary lesions, most often diagnosed in middle age to older adults, occur in any portion uh, of the uh, gastrointestinal uh, tract, but mainly they are located um, uh, in the body of the uh, stomach. And there are three characteristic localization of peptic ulcers. As we said, the ulcer of gastric body, mediogastral ulcer, the pyloric uh, ulcer of the stomach, and the duodenal uh, ulcer that also do, uh, they, uh, separated to the pulmonary and the postpulmonary. And there are two types of uh, peptic ulcer according to the pathogenetic features that they uh, different. Uh, they have the different. Uh, pathogenetic mechanisms. Uh, one of them, a uh, mediocastral uh, ulcer, and second one, pyridudinal uh, ulcer, that most common types of the ulcers. Uh, about the etiology and pathophysiology of the uh, peptic ulcer disease, uh, some acid does seem to be essential for a gastric ulcer to occur. So under specific circumstances, the mucosal barrier can be broken and the hydrochloric acid freely enters the mucosa and injury to tissues occurs. And this results in cellular destruction and inflammation. And uh, after this one, the histamine is uh, released from the masses that uh, results by the vasodilatation, increasing capillary permeability and further secretion of acid and pepsin. The pathogenetic factors of the peptic ulcer disease is infection. For example, the Helicobacter pylori is found in 90% of duodenal and 65% of gastric ulcer patients. Neuroendocrine factors, the secretion of the gastric juice is under the neuroendocrine control, you know, which becomes dysregulated in peptic ulcer patients. Then local mucosal factors, drugs such as non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs that reduce the secretion of the prostaglandins and damage the mucosal barrier. Alcohol, spicy food and substances that stimulate acid secretion may play a pathogenic role. This table demonstrates the comparison uh, of the pyridudinal and the mediogastral uh, ulcers. The uh, pyridudinal uh, ulcers appears more than four times uh, with, in compare with the mediogastral that they uh, appears few times 
age in the prior duodenal uh, uh, ulcers, uh, young and middle aged patients, but in the mediocastral uh, ulcers, uh, they affect the older uh, adults. Uh, the pleurodidinal uh, ulcers mainly found in the develops in the males, uh, but in the mediocastral ulcers, they mainly develops in the females. Uh, condition of adjacent tissue. The adjacent uh, tissue in the pyrodudinal ulcers is normal, but in the mediocastral ulcers, here develops the uh, inflammation, the chronic gastritis. Gastric acidity uh, high in the pyrodudinal uh, ulcers, the low in the mediocastral. Uh, the pyrodudinal uh, ulcers uh, develops in the persons with usually first blood group. Uh, but in the mediocastral ulcers, persons with the usually second blood uh, group were interesting facts also. Uh, there are three uh, morphogenetic periods, stages uh, of the peptic ulcer disease. There. First, uh, uh, let me remember you that the uh, peptic ulcer disease is not uh, related with the inflammation. Not related with the inflammation. Uh, of course, here also develops a secondary inflammatory change, but uh, primary this is not inflammatory uh, diseases. Uh, these um, uh, diseases uh, manifested with the uh, degenerative, necrotic, and sclerotic uh, change. Uh, first uh, stage is erosion. This is the damage of the covering mucosal epithelium. Uh, second one, the acute ulcer stage that develops as a result of penetration of the necrotic process into the deep layers of the gastric wall and the finally the chronic ulcer as we said that uh, substrate uh, is the uh, chronic ulcer that last phase of disease the uh, pathological change uh, during the peptic ulcer disease uh, can penetrate and destroy the muscular layer with the alternation of recidivating and remission periods. Uh, the peptic ulcer uh, disease have a typical distribution. 95% uh, is located in the posterior end of the lesser curvature and most occur in the pyros because this is, you know, the way of the food. Uh, almost is solitary, but in 5-10%, the second ulcer may be found on the in the anterior aspect of the pyrrhic canal. Grossly, it uh, sharply demarcated round or oval defect of mucosa, uh, known as the ulcus rotundum. Most ulcers are small, approximately one a half to two centimeter. The bottom is smooth. The hydrochloric acid and pepsin uh, keep it clean, but it may be covered by blood. Borders of the ulcers are shaped, but around the long lasting lesions, the adjacent mucosa may show some puckering due to fibrosis. The vessels are trapped within the dense scar tissue, replacing muscles, show endarthritis. The crater fills with granulation tissue, followed by Re-epithelization from the margins by healing. Extensive fibrous scarring occur here. Uh, here develops the phenomenon callose ulcer. What meaning it? The fibrous ulcer margins can be evaluated above the uh, surface. Frequently, the uh, ulcerated process extends to the serosa or even beyond it. Uh, and the extension of the inflammation the serosa may result in adhesion to adjacent organs such as pancreas. We'll discuss it during the uh, complications. Uh, and the ulceration may burrow into the affected organ. The remainder of the stomach frequently shows the features of the chronic atrophic gastritis because the chronic atrophic gastritis uh, play, uh, plays, uh, develops during the uh, diseases that will. Uh, discuss later about the uh, inflammatory complications uh, and the healing appears in uh, six eight weeks uh, this is the gross uh, view of the uh, 
uh, gastric tilted ulcers as you see here this is the uh, dark uh, black color, uh, color uh, by the formation here of the uh, hemo uh, the uh, hemosiderin uh, by the uh, action of the hydrochloric acid to the erythrocytes uh, that they uh, extravasated uh, from the blood vessels here and here you see the double uh, ulcers on the stomach uh, during the activation uh, in the uh, ulcers we can find the four histologic zones or the layers uh, the superficially it is the exudative zone is the this is the purulent necrotic zone or we call it the dusty layer you see here the ulcerated uh, mucosa that uh, we call it the uh, superficial exudative zone second one the fibrinose necrosis zone of the necrosis then granulation tissue we see here or the uh, this is the new formated uh, develops the connective tissue and the fibrous tissue fibrous tissue that uh, we can found here endoscopically uh, during the activation the endoscopist they show the uh, granulation tissue they call it the red scar uh, but during the remission uh, they see the uh, whitish structure that they morphologically they uh, related to the scar tissue so let me repeat the first layer this superficial exudative zone then white zone of the fibronode necrosis granulation tissue and the fibrous collagenous scar the uh, present of the fibronode necrosis you remember it's a marker of the activation activity uh, let me discuss about the complication of the cystic ulcer diseases we can uh, group groups uh, it uh, in some groups first we call it destructive or the necrotic complications the hemorrhage perforations and penetrations the hemorrhage is bleeding uh, from the blood vessels that they locate in the base of the ulcers that occurs to the fibrinoid necrosis it's evident in one third of patients and maybe life treatment most commonly it is a, of minor degree which can only be detected by testing the features for iron uh, because this is the chronic bleeding leads to the anemia so more marked hemorrhage may actually cause discoloration of the feces we call it melena probably you remember from the hemocircuitry disturbances we discussed it or the terrace tools due to the formation of iron sulfides also the coffee grounds vomiting may uh, occurs occur here uh, perforation this is the ruptures uh, of the wall of the stomach you see here uh, and after this one the contents of the stomach uh, uh, opens to the peritoneal cavity uh, to lead the development of the peritonitis uh, second group of uh, complications uh, is the inflammatory complications that the, uh, we call it for example, the periulcerous gastritis, the inflammation around the ulcers, perigastritis, duodenitis, and periduodenitis. Uh, and uh, sclerotic complications. Uh, when the uh, ulcer uh, healing, they can result in muscle drawing of by scar tissue that show the stellate contractions. Also, a hard glass stomach, which is uh, found during the radiologic uh, x ray examination of the stomach, pyrostenosis, obstruction, this is the, also the sclerotic complications, duodenostenosis, uh, and the deformation of the duodenum. The peptic ulcer disease, uh, the long standing uh, types uh, without the uh, correct uh, treatment they can develop to the carcinoma 
So the chronic atrophic disease, uh, chronic uh, atrophic gastritis is also the precancerogenic disease of the stomach. And uh, the chronic uh, peptic ulcer disease also the uh, precancerogenic disease of the uh, stomach. But uh, you have remembered that the chronic atrophic gastritis more worse than uh, peptic ulcer disease. The uh, next uh, group is common and alimentary complications. Uh, the alimentary cachexia, peptic disorders, metabolic disturbances, and etc. And finally, the combined uh, complications. Uh, here you see the uh, gross pathology of the stomach with the sclerotic uh, complications. You see here the uh, Fibrosis to the fibrosis and the contracture of the stomach that leading to the hour glass shape as well as the altered mobility of the uh, stomach. It is found during the uh, x ray examination. Uh, now, let me discuss about the intestinal diseases. Uh, there are, you know, uh, two parts of the two types of the two uh, parts of the intestines, the small and the large intestines, or we call it uh, bowels. There are inflammatory diseases, uh, enteritis, colitis, appendicitis, degenerative diseases, enteropathies, vascular diseases such as acute and chronic ischemic diseases, angiodysplasia, hemorrhoid, and etc. Tumors, polyps, carcinomas, and developmental abnormalities such as the megacolon. Uh, mega sigma, diverticulum, stenosis, atresia, and etc. Now we'll discuss about the enteritis. Uh, this is the inflammation of the small intestines. That uh, there are two types of the enteritis: acute and uh, chronic. Uh, duodenitis we call the inflammation of the duodenum. Uh, jejunitis, inflammation of the jejunum, and ileitis, the inflammation of the ileum. Uh, acute enteritis. Uh, there are four uh, etiologic factors uh, of the acute enteritis. First, the infections uh, such as the typhoid, cholera. Uh, about the enteritis, we'll uh, detailly discuss during the uh, infection diseases. For example, uh, in the cholera, we'll discuss about the cholera enteritis, and then during the typhoid. Also, during the sepsis, the toxic agents, the alimentary toxin infections, such as the salmonellosis, botulism, poisoning, alimentary agents, hyperalimentation, the use of the rasping food, spices, strong alcohol drinks, allergic agents, idiosyncrasy or to food stuff, medicines. Uh, the clinical signs and symptoms of the acute enteritis are the diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, loss of appetite, abdominal cramps and pain, pain, bleeding or mucus-like discharge from rectum, fever, dehydration and weight loss. Here you see the uh, types of the acute enteritis according to the uh, pathogen pathogenesis. Uh, we uh, discussed about the uh, gastritis, tonsillitis, the same, uh, same um, uh, types, the cartural, fibrinose, suppurative, and ulcerative. Uh, this slide illustrates the histopathology of the acute duodenitis, that the uh, neutrophils, uh, eosinophils, this is the found without the searching. You see here the, the low middle and high power uh, field and uh, you see here the neutrophils with the abundant number of the eosinophils uh, and sometimes you can find here the plasma cells uh, and the intraepithelial lymphocytes here you see the intraepithelial lymphocytes uh, chronic uh, the etiology of the chronic enteritis first irregular alimentation dietary disturbances alcohol abuse, industrial, domestic and medicamentous poisoning, food allergy, helminthosis and endogenic auto-intoxications and etc. 
Also, the chronic enteritis divided into two types: the chronic atrophic enteritis and chronic non-atrophic enteritis. That uh, they also subdivide into the chronic superficial enteritis and chronic diffuse uh, enter enteritis. Uh, Whipple disease, another name: intestinal lipodystrophy or idiopathic steatorrhea. Whipple disease is a rare systemic infection disease caused by the Bacterium Trophyrema Whipple that first described by George Hoyt Whipple in 1907. Uh, Whipple disease typically present in my uh, middle-aged Caucasian patients with a stri striking male to female predominance of 8 to 1. Uh, it can affect virtually any organ system. Typical signs and symptoms are the lower grade fever, chronic weight loss, arthritis, malabsorption, and lymphadenopathy. Many patients also have significant neuropsychiatric manif manifestations. The polyarthritis of whooping disease is often the first manifestation that may precede gastrointestinal symptoms by years. Immunosuppressive therapy may significantly exacerbate exorbate both the intestinal and systemic manifestations of the disease. Uh, the histopathology of Whipple disease. The Whipple disease, and during the biopsy, there are two uh, major uh, histologic features. First of them is foaming macrophage that they uh, engulf the uh, lipids and uh, they are the pass positive. Uh, macrophage here you see the past positive macrophage and here you see the also the staining of the goblet cells with the past stains but uh, we have to focus uh, the accumulation the abundant number of the macrophage uh, and then the lamina propria often contains the small foci of fat and the hour lying the vocalization of the enterocytes. Uh, another disease is appendicitis, but inflammation of the appendix vermiformis of second. Uh, auto infection uh, play uh, major roles in the etiology of the diseases uh, that are related with intestinal microflora, uh, especially the Escherichia coli, Enterococci, and etc. And the background for the appendicitis, uh, the impaction of the lumen by the fecal and bile concretions, rasping food, foreign bodies, wound accumulation, and etc. And disturbance in blood and nerve supply of mucosa and spasm of the lumen of entering. Uh, the mainly uh, in the clinics, we use the acute appendicitis term. Uh, before they not uh, accepted the chronic appendicitis, but now uh, it acceptable by the clinicians uh, and the pathologists. Uh, there are three types of the acute appendicitis: the simple, superficial, and destructive. The simple and superficial appendicitis are irreversible processes, uh, but uh, if the distraction uh, develops here, this is the irreversible. Uh, irre uh, uh, sorry, the simple and superficial appendicitis are the reversible processes. This is a mistake. Uh, reversible processes. Uh, but the distractive process, not irreversible processes. Uh, that they continue the phlegmanose, apostematose, ulcerative, and gangrenose uh, process. Acute phlegmanose appendicitis. Here we see the gross appearance with the unfixed spacements. And the appendix is swollen and the red due to the hemorrhage. And here we see the microscopic structure histologically that the epithelium here uh, absent is denuded and there is a marked severe inflammation. And the inflammation and the hemorrhagic spans the entire appendix wall. Uh, we can uh, correctly correctly uh, investigate the acute appendicitis and sometimes the surgeon they not uh, tend to send the uh, appendicitis uh, material to the pathology labs 
but in the sometimes in the uh, tip of the appendix uh, we found the malignant tumor of the uh, gastrin producing cells we call it the carcinoids here you see the uh, gross view of the carcinoids and the histologic structures in the uh, lower power and the high power this is the narrow endocrine uh, cancers or the carcinoid the complications of acute appendicitis due to the progression of destructive processes and the spread of the purulent process of the other nearby, or, uh, nearby organs and tissues they include the perforation local and diffuse peritonitis impyema and abscess periappendicitis, periphlebitis, suppurative thrombophlebitis, and the portal periphlebitis and chronic appendicitis and adhesions. The chronic appendicitis develops as a complication of acute appendicitis. Uh, we can find the atrophy of the uh, tunics of the appendix and development of the sclerotic tissue, the fibrotic tissue that they uh, lead to the dyskinetic disturbances and accumulation of the contents inside of the uh, appendix vermiformis that may be results of the high drops of the appendix the uh, accumulation of the uh, contents uh, activation of the inflammation uh, and gangrene of the appendix uh, I would like to say you that uh, not all of the surgical operations uh, for the clinical diagnosis of the appendicitis uh, that not be supported by the pathological diagnosis. Approximately 25% uh, of the uh, surgical operations for the appendicitis, 25% uh, uh, if this is uh, the true uh, operations. Uh, sometimes the another disease may uh, may mimic the uh, appendix, uh, acute appendicitis such as the uh, intestinal uh, problems, the pains uh, or the spasms, pains of, uh, of the uh, intestines or the, the maybe the uh, problems with the genital organs, uh, maybe inflammation of the uh, kidneys or the stone disease of the kidneys and etc etc and here uh, we, we see we do the chronic appendicitis the histopathology that prominence the fibrosis and the fatty infiltration we can find in the wall of the appendix uh, colitis the inflammation of the mucosa of large intestines there are two types of the acute and uh, chronic for the clinical course and morphological features uh, according to the location of the inflammatory process, there are tiflitis, inflammation of the cecum, transversitis, inflammation of the transverse colon, sigmoiditis, inflammation of the sigmoid colon, proctitis, inflammation of the rectum, and the pancolitis, inflammation of the all parts of the large intestines. Uh, the etiology of the acute colitis, the infection colitis, uh, during some infection diseases will uh, meet with the development of the colitis in the dysentery, salmonella, staphylococcal, escherichia coli, typhoid, uh, also the fungi, parasites, tuberculosis, syphilitic, septic colitis, and etc. Then toxic colitis, uh, for example, the uremic, gut, medicamentose, and mercury chloride colitis, and toxic allergic colitis, uh, as well as the alimentary and coprostatic colitis. Uh, there are uh, following types of acute colitis: the catarrhal colitis with the mucous cirrhosis, uh, suppurative and mixed inflammation, fibrinose colitis, colitis, the purulent phlegmonose colitis, hemorrhagic colitis, necrotic colitis. Uh, there is a special types: the gangrenous colitis and ulcerative colitis. Chronic colitis uh, develops as a result of acute colitis factors but with low intensity and long-term consequences. The morphology are the lymphocytic leukocytic infiltration of the mucosa, diffuse sclerotic and sometimes atrophic change, and disturbances in regeneration processes. 
like uh, to the chronic enteritis, the chronic colitis also uh, has the two types, the non-atrophic and atrophic colitis. Non-atrophic colitis also divided to the chronic superficial colitis and uh, chronic diffuse colitis. Complication of the chronic colitis uh, are the sclerosis of the large intestine, stenosis, spreading of the inflammation into the perintestinal soft tissue and peritoneum, avitaminosis, cachexia, and atrophic chronic colitis. That this is the precancerous disease of the large intestines. Uh, here I would like to present you the clinical morphological classifications types of the chronic colitis. First, the ulcerative colitis. Second, the Crohn disease, granulomatous colitis. Uh, third, the indeterminate uh, colitis. That between the ulcerative colitis and colorectal ulcerative uh, colitis. Then, ischemic uh, colitis that develops to the arteriosclerosis, diabetes, vascular surgery, systemic vascular diseases such as scleroderma and rheumatoid arthritis, Wegener scleral matosis, idiopathic lymphocytic phlebitis, amyloidosis as a complication of bird control pill use. Uh, five type, uh, fifth type is abstractive colitis that occur mainly during the adenocarcinomas and other types of colitis. Non-specific bacterial colitis, allergic colitis, and proctitis. Uh, the microscopic colitis that include the two types of the colitis: the collagenous colitis, then uh, lymphocytic colitis, the focal actor colitis, pseudomembranous colitis that mainly caused by the Clostridium difficile, and the amoebic colitis, and etc. Here I would like to present you the uh, microscopic uh, colitis, the main we uh, meet uh, during the uh, practice in the uh, labs. Here you see the uh, hematoxylinosis stenix and the uh, subepithelial uh, region. We found the uh, presence of the band, the pinned uh, collagenose band. After using the trichrome and the vangison stains, we exactly find uh, the presence of the collagenose bands uh, under the epithelium, subendothelial uh, collagenosis. Uh, we call it collagenose colitis. But the lymphocytic colitis differ from the uh, collagenose uh, colitis because here no increasing the thickness of subepithelial collagen and uh, um, let me say uh, to you one uh, secret uh, of the, about the colitis. Uh, as you know, uh, because there, there is the high metabolic activity in the uh, intestines, uh, especially in the large intestines, here normally uh, present the lymphocytes, plasma cells, this is the normal conditions for the uh, intestines. Uh, we, only, uh, we only focus to the uh, architecture of the creeps and the presenting of the intraepithelial lymphocytes because when the uh, lymphocytes present in the lamina propria this is normal conditions for the uh, large intestines uh, but if we found the intraepithelial lymphocytes is the marker of the uh, inflammation and here you see the abundant number of the intraepithelial lymphocytes with the normal a creep architecture. Uh, now let me uh, discuss about the ulcerative colitis or another name in your uh, textbook writing the non-specific ulcerative, ulcerative colitis or idiopathic ulcerative colitis, hemorrhagic colitis or the ulcerative proctocolitis. The chronic inflammatory disease of the colon and the rectum with involvement of the intestinal mucosa and submucosa and ulcer formation. Ulcerative colitis is more common in persons of Caucasian race, in women and young persons. In active phase, the superative, hemorrhagic and ulcerative colitis develops, but in remission, the sclerosis develops in this region. As a result, the large intestine and the going of diffuse cirrhosis. It is the autoimmune diseases is con uh, considered that uh, ulcerative colitis. 
grossly there's uh, some uh, specific uh, features uh, for the ulcerative colitis uh, in the colon the typical pattern of pseudo polyps uh, the, from the severe inflammation and mucosal erosions are found in the acute form the or the activation from the mucosal surfaces wet and glaring from blood and mucus with numerous petechial hemorrhoids. Ulcers of various size can appear. They may be small, rounded, and superficial, or more irregular and somewhat geographic in configuration. In this uh, ulcerative uh, colitis, the nerve plexus also the damage, and the innervation of the intestines is disordered. The trophical lesion starts. We call it ulcerative pancolitis. Uh, as we said, the wall of the large intestine is thickened as a result of the sclerosis. The gross pathology of the ulcerative colitis. The most intense inflammation begins at the lower right in the sigmoid colon and extends the upward to the ascending column. And here we see the iliosecal valve with a portion of the terminal glium that is not involved. But the ulcerative colitis tend to be continuous along the mucosal surface and tend to begin, begin in the rectum. Uh, we discussed uh, about the pseudopolyps. Uh, and here you see the pseudopolyps can be seen clearly as the raised red islands of the inflamed mucosa. And between them is only remaining the muscularis. Here you see and histopathologically uh, the inflammation of the ulcerative colitis is confined primarily to the mucosa for example later we'll discuss about the Crohn diseases that Crohn diseases affected the all of the layers of the uh, large intestines but in the ulcerative colitis as we said that inflammation uh, is confined is limited uh, only in the mucosa and the mucosa here, you see the eroded by the inflammatory process with the ulceration. Here you also see uh, that undermines the surrounding uh, mucosa. And the results of the ulceration often has a flask shape. You see here. And uh, under the high power, uh, we see the crypt abscesses. This is the histological finding more typical with the ulcerative uh, colitis. Abscesses we call the accumulation of the neutrophils, the inside of the lumen of the crypts. You see here, 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 here. And finally, let me discuss about the Crohn diseases. Uh, etiology is unknown of the Crohn diseases. Uh, possible role of the pre inflammatory cytokines in the pathogenesis may cause the Crohn diseases. Possible association with mycobacterium paratuberculosis, measles and mumps infections. Uh, and associated environmental factors are the infection, smoking, consumption of refined sugar, high fiber. Uh, as uh, I would like to uh, say that the Crohn diseases mainly uh, now they consider it the two factors etiological factors first the uh, immune uh, pathway uh, and second one the infections as well as i said that that mycobacterium pyrotuberculosis measles and mumps infections also they consider the, the viral infections the most uh, common in distal ileum and the uh, colon the ibd or the inflammatory bowel disease affect all race and both sexes. The incident is generally higher in developed countries, especially in Northern Europe. Lack of dietary fiber, environmental and the genetic factors are infusing the disease progression. Uh, grossly, the typical transmural lesion can produce the anything from a small ulcer or a lymphoid follicle, we call it ephthoid ulcer, to a deep fissuring ulcer to transmural scarring and chronic inflammation. Macroscopically, there are uh, cardinal histologic features of the 
Crohn disease. The first of uh, them is transmural inflammation. The involvement, the full thickness of the wall from the mucosa to the serosa. Uh, uh, if you remember, uh, just we discussed about the UAS, the alternative colitis, that we said that inflammation only the limited in the mucosa. But in the Crohn disease, the inflammation uh, involves the all of the layers. Then, one third of the cases have a granuloma. This is the granulomatose uh, diseases. Extracolonic sites such as the lymph nodes, liver, and joints may also have granulomas. So, deep ulcers may penetrate through the bowel wall to initiate the abscess or fistula. Inflammation is typically segmental with uninvolved bowel separating areas of involved bowel. This is also uh, the typically histologic features of the Crohn disease. Uh, grossly, the uh, lumen or the relief of the uh, intestine uh, like the uh, cobblestone. You see here the cobblestone like mucosal uh, relief. Uh, in the histology, we see the uh, transmural inflammation, uh, the affecting of all of the layers of the uh, intestine. Here we see the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and the, here the serosa. Uh, the epithelioid granulomas with the giant cells present in the all layers of the bowel uh, and here uh, shown the submucosal fibrotic area, fibrosis is the prominent here. And then the high, high power uh, here you see the uh, Crohn, Crohn granulomas, the granulomas during the Crohn disease in the wall of the uh, large intestines and under the high power we see with you the uh, giant uh, cells, the multinucleated giant cells here also you see very uh, prominent uh, cells. The complication of the Crohn diseases, the serosal environment, the adhesions to other loops of bowel, bladder, abdominal wall, deep fissure ulcers, uh, the fistula and sinuses, the formation of the structures, fibrous adhesions, perforation of the bowel, perianal fistula fissures and abscesses, increased incidence of bowel cancer, sometimes significant bleeding from ulcers, and systemic complications similar to the ulcerative colitis that they involve the skin, eye, joints, and liver. So we uh, finished our lectures. Thank you very much.